What's up guys, my name is Leon Boshkov, I'm Grandmaster from Bulgaria, it's good to be back. Today we're going to have a look at one other defensive method. And this is the method in which we are trying to get rid of the opponent's annoying pieces. The example that I have chosen for you is from a very recent tournament, from the Vikings tournament, where the Polish Grandmaster and star Ion Duda is facing the Russian superstar Artemiev. So at this certain point of the game where white is having an isolated pawn he's obviously all in for the attack on the king side and you can see that his pieces are already viciously looking at the opponent's king with his next move he's trying to get it with the move bishop h6 and all of a sudden black has too many pieces to deal with too many annoying pieces to deal with to start with the most obvious capture here on h6 is definitely no go this is going to lose off the queen takes h6 a lot of pieces are getting closer to the opponent's king. Rook g5 now is a threat. And after 97, this is, this is actually trappy. This is something that you don't have to fall for. You shouldn't take the, the knight on f6 as York will get trapped and you will not get to the opponent's king ever. But Duda rather had this brilliant idea on his mind to jump with the knight on e4. And after knight e4 to sacrifice the other knight with knight g5 but to consistently clear the diagonals and the fast for his pieces so that he can eventually finish the opponent's king off with the move rook h5. Mate is inevitable on h7. So obvious capture doesn't work. Then what should black do? Right now rook g5 and queen g5 are coming as threats. How should he defend the pawn on g7? If he goes for a move like knight e7 He's going to defend the g5 square, this is true, but he's not going to bring enough pieces into the defense and then rook h5 is going to keep on improving the position for white. He's once again threatening to take on g7 followed by queen h6 and if black just repeats the move, the move with the move knight f6, white is not going to do the same. He's going to go for rook g5 and win at least the exchange. The point in such situations is not to lose your tempo, not to give up, to keep on looking for ways to transfer your pieces to the, that part of the board where you need them most. And this is what centralization is all about. The centralized pieces can be brought to any of the flanks whenever you want. So this knight is moving to the g6 square. From g6 it is going to block both the bishop and the rook. Of course white doesn't want to allow this and he brings more pieces into the attack, knight e4. Now what would be more natural than taking the knight on e4? You should try to trade the opponent's pieces, right? Right, but not here, because after rook 1 to e4, you're also bringing more of the, the opponent's attackers closer to your king, and then knight g6 is not going to be good enough to save the game. The rook on h5 is too strong, and if you are careless, if you say do some move like bishop a2, white is going to reveal his main idea, and he's still getting to your king with queen h6 check. And after rook e5, with this exposed king, with the king in front, you will always get checkmated. So let's say rook e5, knight takes e5. Now all sort of threats are there. Rook f4 is leading the, the way. Knight g6 is also there. And if the bishop comes back to save the king, there is knight g6 and this rook is going to drop. So let's accomplish the idea with the previous move, knight e7. Let's finish it. The knight is going to f5. Knight on f5 is blocking now this rook, it is also blocking this bishop and it is even hitting the bishop on h6. And now it looks like that the worst is over for black. But no, Duda is incredibly resourceful and he takes on g7. He didn't move forward with his bishop on h6 just to go back now, obviously. He keeps on bringing more and more power into the attack and the point is that if the king takes on g7, at one point there is queen g5 check followed by knight f6 with quick checkmate, no go. But if we take on g7 with the knight, this is no go neither, as there is knight takes f6, and after bishop f6 and queen h6, once again white makes it to the h7 square. Again, do not lose your temper, bring more and more defenders, and try to get rid of the attackers of the opponent. So this knight on e4 should be traded now, that's for sure. And then after rook takes e4, again he's bringing more pieces into the attack, but because of this brilliant maneuver, black is also bringing, bringing his knight closer to his king, and the, the knight is now providing him shield against the attacks on the g-file, and maybe on the h-file. Duda keeps on bringing his pieces closer and closer with queen h6, and once again, 
Black has to be careful. If he tries to block the opponent's pieces with a move like bishop f5, that wouldn't be optimal, as white can sacrifice the exchange. And if rook takes f5, rook g4 is opening all the gates to the enemy king. And most likely black is just getting checkmated. If after bishop f5 and rook f5, he tries rook e4, that would be a better choice, that would be a better try, but that wouldn't necessarily solve all the problems, as after queen h5, the knight is not moving, white is going to regain the, um, the knight. Now he's only down on exchange, but for the exchange he has a long-term strong attack, as he's going to build the attack on the color of his own bishop. Next he's going to jump knight h4, knight f5 or knight g6, depending on where this king goes. And he has a risk free attack. One more natural continuation after queen h6 is not going to, to save you. A move like queen d7 to defend along the 7th trank actually leads to meet after rook h5. And on knight h5, there is again this discovered attack. The bishop is opened, and mate on h7 is about to happen. Finally, what Artemiev did is well, he pushed the pawn to f5, and by doing so, he managed to exclude all the white pieces from the attack. It's a very important moment now for the first play. If he does nothing, he will be left down a piece and he will be losing the game. But Dudo is again very resourceful and he goes for rook g4. And again, he finds a way to the opponent's position. Once more, Tim have to be has to be very careful. Uh, he wasn't very careful actually in the game. He made the most solid move here. So he brought some more defenders with the move bishop f6, which wasn't optimal, and gave another burst of the attack with knight g5, bishop g5, rook g5. And this inaccurate move, queen d7, actually put him into a very dangerous situation. As now the black pieces have too many obligations, the queen in particular. And with this brilliant idea d5, Duda actually got his material back because of bishop a4. See, the queen is overworked. It cannot defend on g7 and on e8 and on e6 and take the bishop simultaneously. It has to make a move. If it goes to c7, that would have been more stubborn, but then to after all these trades, white is going to be um, much, much better and most likely just strategically winning. Whereas queen f7, which happened in the game, he have been answered with bishop e8, rook e8, rook takes e6, rook e6, rook g7, and queen e6, which led to very, very big advantage for the first player. Still, black managed to save himself with stubborn defense, but this is not the point of what we are doing at the moment. The point of what we are doing at the moment is to find a way how to defend against another brilliant shot by the opponent, the move rook g4. Obviously, we need to do something about the opponent's attacking pieces. And what could be better than taking them? Instead of bishop f6, this capture on g4 would have prevented black from getting checkmated. He might have even played for the win now. After all these brilliant maneuvers, he could have played for the win here. It doesn't really matter how white is taking on h7, the king is going to start running. And after bishop g6, king e7 is important. So that on queen g7, the king gets temporarily in the center. Now, if white had just one tempo, to bring the knight on e4, he, he would have checkmated it. But black is in time to exclude the queen with the move queen d7, bring his queen into the defense. And even though he's uh, losing part of his material, at the end of the day, he should be very, very happy with the ratio that he gets at the end. Two bishops should be uh, better than the knight and the three pawns, and it would be black who is, who is playing for the win in that case. But it all started, remember, with this brilliant maneuver of the black knight from d5 to e7 to f5 and then after the trade on e4 to g7 so remember if you want to defend in a good way against a massive attack of the opponent try to trade as many of his active pieces so that you can eventually get uh, your energy levels at the right proportion and you can eventually expel the attack thanks for watching this see you next time